Okay, so we'll we'll kick off then. So um thank you everybody for joining today. It's a QA for get ground mortgages. Okay. So just to give you a brief uh, overview first of all of what get ground does. So we're at all in one um property investment platform for landlords okay so we can assist you with setting up and running a limited company uh, to hold the properties in we can also assist with uh, finding the right property for you so we do have an online marketplace where you can view different properties that are available okay and then um we can also help source the mortgage as well so so source the financing for the properties that you're looking to purchase OK, so what we're going to do for about 30 minutes today is we're going to go through some questions that you might have and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Um, you will see at the bottom of the uh, Zoom meeting, there's a section for Q&A. So you can pop your questions in there and I'll answer as many as I possibly can. Um, historically, we've usually we usually get sort of around eight or 100 questions. So I try and get through as many as we possibly can in half hour. But we do run this Q&A usually every sort of two to four weeks. Um, so do feel free to go online to to see when the next one is if you want to want to join these regularly. Um, alternatively, as well, um, you can go online as well to get booked in to have a chat with one of us about mortgages. OK, and we are also running uh, what we call an all in one webinar tomorrow. OK, so an all in one webinar will be going through uh, all of the different areas that Get Grounds covers. So that's going to be uh, limited companies and, and a bit more of a breakdown of what that looks like. Um, also going to be looking at um, the marketplace and, and the Get Ground search team where we can identify properties for you from the new market. So for properties that are, are being built currently. Um, and also for secondhand stock as well. And then I will be doing a piece again on mortgages um, in tomorrow's webinar as well. So you can feel free to, to join that webinar as well. Okay, so I'll wait for the questions to fill up. Um, so as I say, Q&A just at the bottom there, if you want to pop your question in and I'll answer them uh, when they start coming through. Okay, so we've had the first question there from Gerard. Gerard has said that he's looking at investing in some social housing stock, uh, initially looking at buying properties with a lease to an approved agent for cash. Um, question is, will he be able to rent, will he be able to remortgage the property after a year or two, as he believes that lenders aren't keen on lending on properties with such a lease in place? Um, really good question, Gerard. We actually get this scenario quite a bit. It seems to be one of those areas where um, people are more um, more interested in investing in at the moment, and the reason being is is simply that the the guarantee on the yield is is usually for quite some time. I've seen some of these where where it's up to twenty five years where the le where the actual um, rental is guaranteed for. Um, in terms of actually getting mortgages on them, we do struggle a bit. To be honest with you, there are a couple of lenders out there that will consider them, but the rates are usually quite high. Um, the problem we have is that sometimes the agreements between yourself as the owner and the housing association or the social housing association, um, they often aren't that favorable in terms of uh, yourself. They're more they're more favorable towards the the provider of the agreements um they don't often have things like break clauses in and stuff like that which can cause issues what i would say is if you are looking to mortgage one of these properties get a copy of the agreement first and then what we can do is we can pitch that to lenders to see exactly what their stance is because every lender will have a different stance based on what's in that agreement um unfortunately it's no black and white answer for you there jared it's it's literally a case of um, going around the lenders to see who's comfortable lending. You're not going to have an awful lot of choice with lenders on that, though. Um, that being said, if it is uh, something that more and more people start doing, then lenders will probably have to open up to it um, on the basis to, you know, to to sort of maintain their business, really. Um, so hopefully that that answers your question to some extent, Gerard. 
Okay, just to let you know as well, you can see the QR code on the screen there as well. So if you uh, use that QR code, you will go through to um, our website where you can where you can book in calls with myself, uh, with my colleagues in the mortgage team as well. Um, you can also have a look around the website to see exactly what stock we've got in our in our marketplace, and also find out a bit more about limited companies as well if that's something you want to do. Okay. So we've got one from Paul. Um, Paul has said, if he's got 50K to 100K, what buy-to-let mortgage can I get without showing any income? So, Paul, um, we usually say that you can mortgage up to 75% of the property value. Okay. Now, that 75% um, will be determined, actually, by the rental income that you're receiving from the property. So we need to demonstrate that there's a decent yield in there for the lenders to get comfortable. And once we know what that what that yield is and, and we tally it up with the what the mortgage is going to look like, we can see what loan to value we can get for you. Um, there are a fair few lenders out there that have no minimum income requirement. So you're not necessarily going to have to show an income, but you're you will be a bit more restricted as to what lenders you can use um, if you've not got an income in the background. OK. What I would say is, is is get booked in for that one. Um, we'll have a chat to you about exactly what mortgage options might be available to you. Obviously, if you could have a property in the back of your mind that you're looking to potentially purchase, that will really help the discussion around the rental income as well. Okay, so uh, NASA has asked for somebody who isn't from the UK and unfamiliar with mortgages, what would I need to know to get started? That's a really good question. We get that we get that question quite a lot, to be honest. Um, so to get started with mortgages in the UK, th there's going to be a few documents that you'll need to provide in order to obtain a mortgage. So that's usually the proof of deposit funds if you're purchasing a property. We're also going to need to know we're also going to need to get your sort of three to six months bank statements, depending on the lender. And we're going to need to get some uh, pay slips or proof of income from you as well. If we're going with a lender that, that has an income requirement. Um, in regards to how you get started with it, the first thing you can to do really is, is have a chat with us. To be honest, we'll, we'll take a, an idea of your, your personal situation um, and then we'll go and try and source a mortgage for you that's that's competitive. Um we are working with quite a wide panel of lenders now. I know in our last q and I think we were only working with five, whereas now we're, we're pretty much working with most of the market, which is great. Um, we do have a few lenders for clients overseas. Um, obviously, with the fact that you're not in the UK does restrict you a little bit, but depending on which country uh, you're based will depend on how many lenders we have to use. So I'd say the best thing you can do to get started is actually, is actually book in for a one-to-one a, a -one chat and then go from there. Okay, so okay, so Lewis has asked, is a leasehold apartment an issue for mortgages? Um, no, absolutely not. In fact, it's it's more the other way around. If you had a freehold flat, um, that would cause more issues for you. Um, the benefit to having a leasehold on a flat is that there are certain obligations to people who are owning the properties within the block. Um, there's obligation to, you know, maintain communal areas to, so there's, um, so there is uh, obligations to fix things that are wrong in communal areas. Like if there's problems with the roof, if there's a leak from below that type of thing. So actually having a lease on a flat is absolutely normal. Um, that's kind of how they should be generally. Um, what we would say is it, it can become an issue for a mortgage if the length of the lease is too short. So, for example, if you're finding a property that had, say, 60 years left on the lease, you're really going to struggle to get a mortgage on that because at some point you're probably going to have to do a lease renewal. OK, so what I would say is, is be careful with the length of the lease that's remaining. Ideally, you want something with sort of 90 plus years on it. Also, be very cautious around the service charges and ground rents. So you don't want anything massively expensive um, unless there is good reason for it. OK, um, and what we can do is if, if you identified a property that you're looking to buy, that's a leasehold property, but you're not sure, 
you can always speak to us and we can we can make a judgment call on it for you on on how likely it is to be able to get a mortgage for you okay okay and there was a second part to that question. Uh, is there a calculator that you can use to ensure the deal stacks up? So we do have a number of calculators on our website. So again, if you go through that QR code, you'll go onto our website. You can you can activate some of the cal calculators on there and, and have a look. What I would say though is that obviously with all mortgages, they are they are you know based on the particular scenario whereas the calculator will provide you with a broad understanding it's still best to get booked in to have a chat to see whether or not it definitely stacks up based on some of the other criteria that might be in play okay Caroline has asked, can I get a mortgage in principle for paying off a bridge loan? Um, it depends, Caroline. Is is the bridge loan, um, it depends whether or not the bridge loan is in place yet or whether or not you're trying to remortgage out of the bridge. Um, we can certainly help with a remortgage out of a bridge. Um, in terms of getting your mortgage in principle just for obtaining the bridge, because uh, I know some lenders ask for that, we would always say to speak to the advisor that's doing the actual bridging loan um as they'll understand the situation a bit better but if you're just trying to obtain a mortgage to pay off a bridge then absolutely we can help with that um we get a lot of scenarios like that if people have bought in developments um with like short short dates where they have to complete so yeah if you would like to remortgage to pay off a bridge we can definitely help Okay, so uh, Achik has asked, do you do mortgages for overseas investors? Yes, we do. Yep, we can offer mortgages to clients in over 180 countries. Um, so we've got a wide panel of lenders that do that do um, overseas mortgages. Um, how does the process differ? The main difference in the process on this would be um, in terms of source of funds. Okay, so we will need to obviously evidence that you've got funds for the deposit. Um, and there's a few more due diligence checks that need to be done by ourselves and by the lenders in order to, to assist. The other way that the process can differ as well is obviously if, if things need to be translated into English. Um, and some lenders do require um, enhanced ID checks as well. So that's that's the main difference in terms of the actual assessment of the mortgage and things like that. It's, it's exactly the same. Um, so there's no no real difference there. Um, one of the other things when it comes to legals is that you might need a process agent. Um, your solicitor can obviously discuss that with you if you prefer. It is a legal requirement um, or we can help with that side of things as well. Okay. So we've got a few questions in the chat here from the same people so i'm going to try and and focus on people who have not asked a question um okay uh so james has asked uh remortgage main residential property sell it to limited company um if you were looking to move your main residential property to a limited company by to let there'd be no need to remortgage it it would just be a sale OK, so it would be classed as a purchase application for the limited company. Um, obviously, the key thing with that is if it's gone into a limited company, you're not going to be permitted to live in that property again. Um, that That's obviously the big one. Um, and we do actually have to make sure that you've got really a, a, an onward purchase that you're going to be doing to, to live in. Um, lenders are not too keen on you moving a residential property to a limited company by to let if you've got no new property to move into, okay? Uh, 
Um, James, I noticed you've you've also popped a question in there around capital gains tax and things like that. Unfortunately, I cannot provide any advice as to to what the taxation is going to look like. So I would say to speak to a solicitor or an accountant regarding that one. Uh, Richard has asked, where do you think buy to let limited company rates will be by March 2024? Um, really hard to say, Richard. Um, really, really hard to say based on the fact that we still don't really know what's going to happen with the Bank of England base rate. Um, base rate has held twice um, in the last couple of meetings. Um, I think it very much depends on how much inflation comes down to whether or not they start to drop. Um, there's a massive sort of disparity at the moment in terms of rates for limited company buy to lets as it stands already. So rates are starting at anywhere as low as about 4.2% and they're going all the way up to about six and a half percent with sort of standard lenders um the actual key uh difference between the rates uh, actually comes with the product fees so some lenders are charging anywhere up to sort of seven or eight percent product fee which is absolutely huge um and then offering really low rates off the back of that whereas some lenders are offering sort of six percent rates but with with really low fees um so in terms of the actual rates i'm not sure what's going to happen but i do think that uh, the actual product fee side of things will maybe stabilise a little bit over the coming sort of year, um, because that's the thing which is putting off a lot of investors. If you if you get given sort of a really really good rate, but then the actual product fee is sort of like six seven percent, it's uh it works out to not be that cost effective. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens over the next sort of six to twelve months. But um, I, I imagine the actual buy to let rates. I, I don't think they're going to go down massively from sort of like the minimum where they are at the moment, which is like 4.2, 4.3. I think we'll just see changes to the product fees. That is just my opinion, though. Maybe completely, completely wrong there. <laughs> um, that's just based on on my general outlook on the market. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, uh, Thorfeek has asked, are there any advantages of doing buy to let via limited company versus an individual? Uh, yes, there are. So the advantages that you have through a limited company um, is that potentially you can be subject to less tax. Okay, so in terms of the biggest, the biggest thing that we get is is around mortgage interest. So if you were to own a property as an individual and you're renting it out, you're going to be paying uh, income tax on the on the revenue that's generated from the rent. OK, so what whatever that rent is, you're not able to offset your mortgage interest, um, whereas through a limited company, you're going to be able to offset that mortgage interest so that you pay less corporation tax. Uh, obviously, everybody's situation is different. So I would say to speak to an accountant and you can also book in as well to speak to one of our account managers uh, regarding setting up a limited company. And they'll tell you, they'll talk you through all the bits you can and can't offset and that type of thing. Um, but we've seen that generally speaking, a buying through a limited company can be more cost effective. And I believe it's about 60 to 70 percent of all new buy to let purchases are done through a limited company. So there's a, often the case uh, it's the way to go at the moment. Okay, so Henry has asked, how difficult is it to get a mortgage in Scotland from overseas in Australia? Uh, is there a minimum size mortgage that could be attained, assuming that all other relevant criteria are met? Um, good question, Henry. Getting a mortgage um, in Scotland is a fair bit harder, actually, than, than the rest of the UK due to different uh, sort of laws and stuff when you're buying the property. What we would say is you're probably going to want to go with properties whereby you can have a minimum loan size of about 100k. The implication to going any lower than that is that you just rule out the amount of lenders that you've got available. Obviously, the fact that you're living in Australia automatically reduces the amount of lenders that you can use. Um, then once you add in Scotland as a criteria as well, that that narrows even further. Um, so I would say aim for properties at, say, 150K plus 
uh, with about 100k mortgage um, as the bare minimum. Um, obviously, the rent and everything like that still needs to fit. If you've got a property in mind, though, uh, get booked in. We'll have a chat through it. That sounds like a sounds like something we can help with. Okay. Okay. So BB has asked, what is the minimum time required for a person to be living in the UK before being accepted? Um, I think the lowest, if you want to be classed as having, if you want the UK kind of rates, the very minimum with some of our lenders is about three months. Um, some lenders are three years. So it very much depends on whether or not your circumstances, the rest of your circumstances fits the criteria. But I would say minimum three months. You can get a mortgage if you've not been in the UK for three months, but you might be subject to higher rates or international rates. Okay, so Haswani has asked, uh, what is the loan to value range if we apply for a mortgage using a company structure? Um, the the max LTV is probably 75, 80%, depending on the rental. Um, most lenders will do 75%. A few will do 80% uh, loan to value at a push. Uh, NASA has said, if you've gone through all the source of funds checks to establish the limited company, do you have to do it again when applying for a mortgage? Um, we can try it. And if you're if you if you've established the company through get ground, um, and actually you're doing the mortgage through get ground as well, then what we can do is we can try to utilize um, the source of funds stuff that you've done for the limited company so that you don't have to duplicate too much information. The only time where we might ask for more is if the lender specifically wants any more that we don't already have on file, okay? Okay, Vivian has asked, um, she said, sorry for entering the meeting late. No worries, Vivian, that's quite all right. Um, looking to purchase a house as a first time buyer, not sure of the process. OK, so um, the process, really, you need to identify the property first. Um, that's probably your, your your best starting point. And presumably you're you're talking about buying this property for a buy to let purpose, as that's what we specialize in. Uh, you need to identify the property, identify what the rent's going to look on that, like on that and identify how much deposit you're comfortable to put down. Once you've got those those things, I would say get booked in for a chat and we'll can see we can see if we can make the numbers work for you. Um, obviously, what I would say is probably don't get any offers accepted prior to having a, an initial chat um, and we can go from there. Okay, John has asked, uh, at what age could you get a buy to let seven bedrooms, eight persons HMO mortgage? Um, John, most uh, lenders for limited company buy to lets are 18 years or 21 years old as a minimum. Um, what I would say, though, is if you're looking to do this type of uh, looking to buy this type of property, it is quite a complex let from the lender's eyes, at least. Um, so they're usually going to want you to have some kind of experience. So that might mean that you need to have owned your own property for a while, or it means that you might have had to uh, uh, have had uh, buy to lets in the background for usually six or 12 months. Um, so I would say if you're if it's like literally your first property, um, I would say you're probably going to struggle a little, little bit on that. Um, there might be a few lenders that will do it, but probably at quite a high rate. Um, if you've got other properties in the background, um, then you, you're going to have more success there. Okay. Just going through, we've got loads of questions in here. 
So I'm just going to try and cover off a few from people who've not asked any yet. Okay, uh, Nita has said that she's got a bit more of a complex uh, complex scenario. Um, if you want to scan the QR code that's on screen, okay, you'll be able to go through to our website. There will be a link in there to book in with, with one of the mortgage team. Okay, so Nita, feel free to scan that QR code. Alternatively, you can go onto the Get Ground website. Okay, uh, if you go onto the Get Ground website, there will be links on there to get booked in um, and you'll probably speak to one of my colleagues, first of all, just to have a quick chat around what it is you're looking to do, and then that will get booked into my diary directly. Okay. Um, so there you go. Uh, Joy has asked, what percentage do you need as a deposit for a buy to let? Usually a minimum of 20, 25%, uh, depending on the rent. Uh, Avis has asked, can I change my residential mortgage to a buy to let via a limited company? Um, what you would need to do on that, if you're moving it from a personal name to a limited company name, you effectively need to sell the property to the limited company. OK, so I would say have a chat with probably a solicitor around what the costing will look like on that. You may be subject to things like capital gains, stamp duty, that type of thing. Um, once you know exactly what the costing looks like, then we can start looking at the mortgage options for you because you may need to factor in some of the costs into the mortgage. OK, so that's what you need to do there, Avis. Uh, OK, KK Lawrence has said, is it true that a new company needs to have at least three years of business records beforehand in order to apply for a buy to let mortgage from a lender no that is a very common misconception it's not the case um we actually specialize in uh special purpose vehicles uh so as limited companies so these limited companies are set up specifically for holding property and you don't need to have any business records beforehand um what they will do is they'll do a check on the people in the company to check uh what income and expenditure looks like credit history that type of thing um, but in terms of the actual company, it just needs to be set up and incorporated. OK, and you need to have the relevant uh, what we call SIC codes, which are the codes for for what purpose they're, the company's for. OK, so they need to be the codes that are relevant to letting property. Um, so, no, you don't need to open a company, sit on it for three years before you can uh, actually get a mortgage on it. Okay. Uh, Adam has asked, is it possible to buy a property to let and rent it out to family members? Um, unfortunately not, Adam. OK, so, well, not with a mortgage, at least. You can have a property in a limited company, um, mortgage free, and you can technically let whoever you want live in there because there's no obligation from the lender. Soon as it's got a mortgage on there and you want to rent it out to family, that's when it becomes what you call a consumer buy to let. Um, or a regulated buy to let, you're going to struggle to get that type of lending through a limited company. Um, as it stands at the moment, get ground only operate with non regulated mortgage loans. Okay, so loans that are specifically designed for business purposes, so to be let out. Um, so it wouldn't be one that would fall into our remit. To be honest, I think you'd struggle to find a lender on a limited company basis that will allow you to let family live there. Okay, we've got another question here. Uh, someone with not very good credit, how does it affect the ability to buy it as a limited company? Um, we'll still do, the lender will still do credit checks, okay, as part of the application. There's not as much bearing on it as if you were, say, buying a residential home to live in, but it does still factor in, okay? So what I would say is be very upfront and honest with the advisor as to exactly what the problem with the credit is. OK, and then once we've identified what the problem with the credit is, we can speak to lenders directly and say, look, 
let's say for example it was a default four years ago for 200 pounds we can then lay that on the line to them and say look it's a default for that um and they'll tell us yes or no if it's a more in-depth credit issue say for example you're on a debt management plan um you're going to be really really restricted to how many lenders you can use um so we'll need to have some good evidence that you've been paying back the debt management plan we'll have to see ongoing credit history for the last sort of six years uh going back rather so very much depends on the level of of poor credit uh to whether or not you'd be accepted um but it's definitely something we could have a look at um done mortgages before for people with with not so good credit um where it's just been a, a blip um and it's it's they've, they've been absolutely fine Uh, Jackson has said, uh, if I intend to get a buy to let property under a company name, but it's not generating any rental income yet, can I still get a mortgage with estimated future rental income? Um, and also, does the lender need to review the current financial status? So, Jackson, the lender will look at your current financial situation um purely on the basis that uh they want to see that you're able to maintain your monthly payments on on any financial commitments that you've got if there is an issue at all with with credit we can flag that to the lenders and we can see who's still comfortable to lend in regards to purchasing a new property under a limited company name there, there's generally not often a rental income already going through it so you've not got to worry about that um what you need to do is, is have a good idea of what the rental income looks like and the lender will then send out a surveyor uh, to go and effectively look at the property and, and check that that rental income is realistic for that area and that property type. OK. Uh, somebody's asked, is there anybody out there who offers competitive rates without product fees? Um, generally speaking, the more competitive rates do come with a product fee. Um, what I would say it's probably best to do is have a chat with us. We can maybe pull together sort of two or three different examples for you of rates, um, some with fees, some without fees. Uh, and then what you can do is you can work out whether or not actually you'd prefer to take the hit on the, the rate uh, or take the hit on the fee. Um, unfortunately, there's not loads in the mo at the moment where you're going to have a really competitive rate with no fee um usually there's some kind of product fee attached right i'm going to answer one or two and then we'll call it there for today um okay okay somebody's asked what are the rates for foreign investors um which possibilities are there for them um i mean possibilities are the same same really for uk uh limited company buy to lets hmos student lets service accommodation that you can get most of those still if, even if you're a client from overseas um the most competitive rates in the moment for foreign investors i think start at around six percent okay uh product fees are anywhere up to about sort of five or six percent i'd say for foreign investors at the moment um so anywhere i'd say the rates probably in the region of about six to eight percent typically depending on which country you're based in Okay, Sarah, um, in regards to your question about moving uh, a residential property to a limited company, um, if you wanted to do that, you'd need to sell the property to a limited company. If you did just want to rent that property out, that's absolutely fine as well, but you'll just need to get consent to let from the lender. Um, and then you can move that onto a buy to let um, personal name mortgage at a later date if you did want to. Um, yeah, but what I would usually say is when you get, go to do the buy to let mortgage at a later stage obviously let us know we can probably assist you with that um and obviously it would help if you've got a another property in the background that you're going to be moving into okay
Okay, and then final question I'm going to answer for today. Uh, do you provide loans for short-term let serviced accommodation? Yes, we do. So the what you'll need to provide when it comes to serviced accommodation properties is a breakdown of what the weekly rental will look like in the high season, the mid season and the low season. And then what the lender will do is they'll average that out and they'll look at, uh, they'll have a certain amount of weeks of the year that they'll average it over. And then that's what they'll use for their rental stress tests. We usually find with short term lets that actually getting the right level of borrowers, borrowing is not too hard because the yields on them are really, really good. Uh, the lender just makes you jump through a few more hoops in terms of getting the right documentation to prove that. Um, but yeah, absolutely short-term lets, something we can help with. So we got through about 30, 33 of those questions today. So thank you all for, for jumping on the call today um, to, to listen to those questions. Um, I think we had about 50, 52 people on here, so which is really good. We will be doing another one of these in the next um, in the next probably few weeks. As I said, as well at the beginning of the call, we are doing a all in one webinar tomorrow. So this is where we discuss um, this is where we discuss limited companies. We discuss the uh, get ground search, which is where you can look at uh, different properties, whether they be new developments or secondhand stock. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at mortgages as well. So we'll have sort of a, a presentation. It won't necessarily be too much of a Q&A, but definitely a presentation on all those areas. You will be able to see uh, in the chat as well that there is a link to that webinar tomorrow as well. So do feel free to save that link uh, or go through to that link to, to register for that webinar. Um, what you'll also be able to see on your screen is a QR code. Uh, feel free to go through to that QR code. You can get booked in to have a chat. Um, apologies, I couldn't get through all your questions. Unfortunately, we, we get so many questions on these that I can't get to all of them. Um, but thank you ever so much. And we will, uh, as I said, we'll be back in a, in a couple of weeks to do another Q&A. Thanks very much for your time, everyone.